Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship. We are so glad you're here. Today is our Just Peace Sunday where we celebrate the, the fact that St. John's United Church of Christ is part of this movement within our congregation, our denomination, and around the world that is a movement for just peace. Let us bring our hearts and minds into worship as we celebrate our relationship with God and our connection to Christ with our choral introit in my life. <laughs> whether we're gathering in church or at home or snuggled up in our bed or at work. When we worship God, we recognize that we come with many, many burdens that weigh down our hearts and burden our souls. So as we gather for worship as a community, we give space so that we might share those prayers we share the prayers of concern and sorrow. We look for hope and healing. And we also look for those prayers of celebration and joy that continue to remind us of the goodness of God and the steadfastness of love. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we recognize this Sunday, the many injustices that are alive in this world that you have witnessed from the beginning of time and continue to reign all too strongly. Gracious God, may you give us strength to stand boldly against the injustices of this world so that we might show the true peace of your world. For all the prayers that we carry today that are heavy on our hearts and minds, gracious God, peaceful God, take them from us. Encourage in our hearts a peaceful and hopeful spirit so that we might find renewal in your grace and head forth into your world ready to bear the kingdom. Loving Lord, for all of the sorrows that we bring with us today, may we lay them at your feet so that you might embrace your servants and give them strength renewed to send them into the world refreshed and comforted and ready to pass it on to others. Wondrous God, we thank you for our prayers that we bring today of celebration and joy where we recognize you fully at work in this world and in our lives. We thank you for all the ways that we have enough, for all the people who are in our lives that encourage and support, and most importantly, God, for your presence that does not abandon. We lift all these prayers to you today as your Son teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us join together in our first hymn, Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise. <laughs> God, as we say together a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, who reconciled and made new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church. We celebrate God's presence to love and serve. verses 1 and 3. I invite you to join with us.
Bibles now to the book of Psalms, Psalm 105, and we'll read together verses 1 through 6, and then pick up again at verse 37 through 45. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The psalmist then continues to describe the many ways God has worked through history, and we pick up again on verse 31. Then God brought Israel out with silver and gold. And there was no one among their tribe who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering, and fire to give life by night. They asked, and he brought quails, and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. May God bless the reading and hearing of this scripture and use it in the building of our faith. Every day we encounter justice issues in the news, in our lives, in our own households perhaps. Every day we see where just peace could be utilized to perhaps calm tense situations and encourage compassion among brethren, among fellow Christians, and in the world. On Sundays like Just Peace Sunday, this is the day when we encourage people to act, but I find in this climate of national and global and local and household history, to encourage people to act almost feels exhausting. I think many people are overwhelmed whether you're working within your own lives to just keep all the balls rolling or whether you're so torn up every time you go on social media to look for entertainment and just find heavy-hearted news, or you turn on the actual news and hear of all the ways the media is going to show you heartache and What then are we to do? As the torchbearers of hope and faith, how do we work, walk and work in a world that seems so torn apart? I think one of the biggest problems in this moment of history is that None of us have experienced things like this before in most of our lifetimes, and yet these experiences are not all that different. 
There have always been sicknesses in the world. There has always been war. There's always been unrest. History continues to cycle through these things. There are natural disasters that have torn apart the world in the past, and humans continue to find ways to rebuild. There have been diseases and plagues throughout history, and humans find ways to rebuild. When two or more are gathered, we have found ways to be unjust to each other, and somehow, eventually, we find compassion, and we rebuild. There are some struggles that we have continued to have since the beginning of history, and perhaps we will begin to rebuild. When I read this psalm today, it reminds me, though, that in these times when we're looking for answers or questioning God why, it is important and essential to start with thanks. The psalmist recognizes that the world has had tumultuous history, but the history has shown that God's is present. The people have work to do, but God is present. Continually throughout the book of Psalms, we hear these songs of praise to God that recognize heartache and hurt and lament they tell the children of the history of their people, and they remind all of the faithful that, and we rebuild. The story that we read in the book of Psalms today is the reminder of the Exodus story. The story of Moses getting all the people free. A people of slavery who moved into Egypt as a sign of hope because there was famine in the world and Egypt was the place of peace and hope. And so they migrated. They immigrated to Egypt and they helped Egypt grow and it was a beautiful relationship until the Egyptian people forgot forgot how Jacob's family had come into Egypt in a time when the world needed them. The Egyptian people forgot and became, became intimidated and decided, we'll control these people, these Jacob's people. We'll control them by turning them into slaves. And so the Israelites became slaves for generations. And finally, after crying out to God, God answered. It didn't happen when the first child became a slave. It didn't happen when the first person died a slave. It didn't happen in the first generation. It happened after decades of tears. In these moments, of injustice, we ask, why, God? Why did it take you so long to intervene for your people? Your people that you sent to Egypt saying, this will be your salvation, I'm sending Jacob ahead, and it will be painful for Jacob, but he will make things ready. Joseph brought the people of Israel to Egypt after he was a slave himself. And he fought his way out of slavery with not violence, but the exact opposite. With the acknowledgement of his great gifts. And he made way for the people of Israel and then generations later, as the Israelites became slaves, we ask again. 
history continues to make us ask, why, God? Why does this injustice reign, and why do we continue to head down these paths? Sometimes the question I think we get wrong. God's given all of us choice. We all have choices that we can make, and the truth is, is that when we read Scripture, we realize that God does not interfere alone. The psalm talks about how God brought forth water from the stone, but the truth is when the Israelites were in the desert, they whined and complained and moaned, and God made that happen, but first, somebody had to hit that rock. God uses individuals and conduits to make things God uses lamenters and mourners to help the world hear the injustice and see the pain. If a parent interferes every time a child heads towards a dangerous choice, then the child never learns. Every parent has to make a hard choice as to what will I allow my children to choose? And at what point do I interfere? What are we choosing? And where are we finding our godly gifts in order to make better choices and bring about peace on earth? Just Peace Sunday. It's Just Peace Sunday where we recognize this rich history in the United Church of Christ where at some point we said, you know what? War is never going to be the answer. Violence is never going to be the answer. Politically, globally, we can understand how sometimes this is a necessity because humans just don't understand any other choice. But as a church, we are going to stand up and say, peace is our only real option. And as a church, we will give strength and encouragement to all those who have to go forth and fight and commit acts of violence in order to somehow balance these choices we have made. But as a church, we will step up and tell our leaders, Tell our community that there is another way. Amen. We are not going to get anywhere with hatred and violence and anger in our hearts. And God help me, there has been a lot of anger. And I am not exactly. We could tell the history of Israel. We could tell the history of Christianity, of church, and of faith with anger in our hearts and with the memory of only persecution on our minds. But the truth is, is that the history of your life is going to be best told when you remember you are a survivor. You were chosen by God before you were ever even created. You matter. Amen. And isn't that the message that everyone needs to hear? Peace is not going to come through violence. It's not going to come through anger. It's going to come from recognizing that each and every one of us were made with great intention and purpose and beauty.
And it comes when we celebrate the God who made that possible. So let us be a just peace church and praise God who has the power over all, gives us the freedom and strength to go forth and make choices and sometimes get it wrong, but continues to bring us back into the fold and teach us better ways. May we be open and excited about the beauty of God's teachings and grace in this world and the ways we are invited to be a part. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us join together in our hymn, which you'll find on page five, For the Fruit of All Creation. our Just Peace Church status, we started looking for partners that we could engage with even during this time of uh, unknowing. And one group that has begin, begun to develop and really start to work within our county and our town here in Belvedere is a group called the United Bridges Project who works diligently to encourage compassion and understanding and common ground for many different groups within our own community. We have a special mission project coming up with the Bridges United Project where we will be helping to refurbish the outdoor facilities of the Y. During the time of coronavirus, our, our YMCA has been a very important facility and building and caretakers for our children of, non, of essential workers. And now while school is in session, they're providing space for children who do not have anywhere else to go to do school as well. So we are trying to provide a upgrade in the outdoor space because we know during coronavirus this all of the regulations are making outdoor spaces so much more important so this saturday we have an opportunity to join with the bridges united project to help rebuild the outdoor facilities of the y here in town i encourage you to look for the sign-up sheet and 
If you can't sign up and you just want to show up on the day with some tools in hand ready to help out, that's probably fine as well. They'll be starting the rebuilding, I believe, at 9 a.m. this Saturday. And there, will, there is a sign-up sheet that is electronic that we'll be sending out, and I'll make sure if you want it and can't find it, talk to me and I will make sure you get that. Let us work within our community to build unity, build compassion, and build our common ground together. With that, let us sing our doxology. Amen. 